Hey guys, this is Ron Moore, and it's time to play Shadowgate for the NES. I have been waiting to do this LP for a very long time. Shadowgate is a very underrated RPG in my opinion, and this is pretty much the only RPG I've ever cared about. I remember writing to Nintendo for a long time, asking them when I was a kid, because I wasn't allowed to call the Gameplay Counselor's Hotline or whatever back then, even though I did a few times and I almost got in trouble for it. Um, I remember writing to N Nintendo a lot because I needed help in this game a lot. This game was very hard to me when I was a kid. Um, but once you beat it, it's easy. It's all about memorization. And for the f uh, to get the fullness of this LP, I am going to do what is requested by Gunstar Hero 21 and die on purpose a lot in this game to show you all the various deaths in this game. There's a lot of ways to die in this game. And so yeah, I really do love this game. Brings back a lot of great memories already, just to hear this music. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here. And right here you start out in the front of uh, Castle Shadowgate. That's some more awesome music right here. I used to kind of hate this game when I was a kid because it was too hard and RPGs is not my kind of game to play. But this game grew on me and I loved it. This, this is a real awesome game. The dreaded warlock lord will use his black magic. A black magic woman to raise the behemoth from the dark depths. 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 The combination of his evil arts and the great titan's power will surely destroy us all! Destroy us all! You are the last of the line of kings, the seed of prophecy that was foretold, foretold eons ago. Dang, I had to mess up the narration by stuttering. Only you can stop, only you can prevent forest fires and the evil one from darkening our world forever! Fare thee well. And gritting your teeth, you swear by your god's name that you will destroy the Warlock Lord! Alright. So, let's open the skull here and get this key. You will need it inside the castle. You do not need this key to open this door right here. The key one is in hand. Now you might think, if you haven't played this game and you're not ready to RPGs, you're looking at this game right now and thinking, this game looks boring, this game looks lame, don't judge a book by its cover, don't even judge this game by watching this LP. Play it yourself, give it a chance, even if you're not an RPG fan. You know, give it time, be patient with it, you know, you might be hooked onto this game. It's, it's real fun, there's a lot of fun ways of dying. The sound of ma manico maniacal laughter echoes in your ears. torches in hand. Yes, take every single freaking torch that you come across. You are going to need all the torches. Because if your torch goes out, you die. Now, you don't have to do this, but I just want to do this for fun. Just burn the rug to see what happens. The rug quickly catches on fire and burns away. That's it. <laughs> now, there's no point in doing that. Just to do it just for the lulls, I guess. Okay, now that's the door that's locked and you need to use key one to open it. What do you want to use this on? Click! The key worked! And I locked the door! Is that the yell? I mean, man, all I did was open the door. It's not a secret passage or anything. The stone walls seem uncomfortably close as you walk down the stairs. The, the, nar the narration in this game just creeped me out. The way you read it just makes you scared, you know? So this game just scared me when I was a kid. Take these torches and... Now... You notice that part of the wall right there is a different color than the rest of the wall. So, guess what that indicates? Yep, a secret passage, and you can open it. The stone falls away to reveal a secret passage. Or PASSAGE! As it says, the two exclamation marks. Alright, let's look at this book. It's an ancient tome. It seems that no one has disturbed its pages for centuries. Well, I'm going to disturb it now. What are they going to do, huh? Who's going to do something? Oh, oh. Okay, when you remove the book from its pedestal, the floor collapses and you fall to your death. It's a sad thing that your adventures have ended here! And this part of the game, the music and that image right there really creeped me out when I was a kid. 
this game can be, can be very creepy. So yeah, there you go. I died already. This is one of the many ways to die in this game. That's one. That's one of the things that makes this game fun. All right. Start back in this room again. This time, do not take the book. Only the torches. Uh, aim it right there. Oh, that's what I hate about this game. Uh, just you gotta aim your hand right. You know when you want to do a certain action. Okay, now you can open the book. A rectangular hole has been cut out of the inside of the book. You can open it, and now we're looking at the inside of the book. And key two is in there. Take key two. Now, yeah. So you don't take the book. You can open it though and take what's inside of it. Just don't remove the book from the actual pedestal. You know. Um, okay. Now we're back in this room again, and we're going to use key two to open up that closet right there. What do you want to use this on? What do you think, you idiot? Click the key worked again. Get out the door. Now we're inside the closet. Oh! As you enter, you can see a sword and a sling inside. What did they say? Oh! Four! <laughs> Come on. The sling was taken. The sword is in hand. Alright, so let's get out of here. And now let's go through that secret passage. Ugh! Yeah, see, you gotta point it exactly how to be precise. As soon as you enter the room, you see an arrow on the front wall. The arrow is in hand. What? I wanna take the torch! Oh, you can't, because they're not torches, I guess. I don't know what the heck those things are. The ledge wasn't strong enough to hold you. You fall to the ground and land hard on your rump. Now you thought I was going to die there, right? I thought so too at first, but nope. Okay, now that music indicates that my torch is going out, so I need to light a new one, and I hate that song. That's probably the only song I hate in this game. It's freaking annoying. Okay, let's go back in here, and let's go in this direction now. The stones in these walls were probably cut by the hands of enslaved mountain dwarves. Let's go to the left door first. You enter a cold room. The stench of flesh and decay pervades the small chamber. You begin to shiver. This room is cold. Uh, uh, this room is really cold. This room is cold, Cuddy. All right, let's take the torches again. Let's look at this thing. Yeah, if, if this is your first time playing this game, look at everything. A skip will tell you. Look at everything here. But don't take everything, because taking certain things can cause you to die. All right, let's go down this trap door here. Oh, man, what happened? A broken fragment of the wooden ladder hangs from the opening. I wish you would have told me that before I proceeded to go down there. As you go down the trap door, you realize you took a big step. The fall is quite fatal. So, yeah, this game is very tricky and very slick. You gotta be very careful. Love the music in this game. I know this is not the only music in this game. There's more coming up later. Alright. Let's go through this door now. The door's open. Fear grips you as you enter this hot room. Well, yeah, fear would grip me too if I saw those eyes staring at me back there. The torch is in hand. Uh oh. <sighs> Whoosh! Flames suddenly shoot from the dragon's mouth. Dragon flame engulfs your body. You pay for your curiosity with your life. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. I will see you guys in part two. God bless and take care. Welcome back to Shadowgate. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started again here. Let's go back to this room. 
This time, what you need to do is you need to get the shield first. To, well, shield you from the dragon's fire. That way, you can pick up all the other items without getting killed. Alright, so the only, the only items you're going to need is a spear, hammer, and the torch. Leave everything else. You don't need... Oh, yeah, I don't think... If I remember, I don't think you need the helmet or the skulls or that bone. Just the hammer and spear and the torch, of course. Hey, that's getting repetitive. I mean, come on. You know, I got the shield. So yeah, stop firing at me. I got. I don't. Oh, I took the skull just for the heck of it. I'm. I'm you know what? I guess just for fun, I'll take everything. Just like Skip said, take everything here. Wait a minute. What? Ah. See. You gotta leave the room, then come back. Your shield's not going to protect you all the time. So, you get burned and you die. And continue back here again. So I think, like, to be safe after two, after the dragon fires at me two times, I leave and come back. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the hammer, spear, and torch and then get out of here. If you wonder what that uh, big pile of orange stuff is over there, that's gold. And no, you can't take that. Okay, I want to be safe and uh, let, me, let me light up the torch here. Uh, want to be safe, leave the room to come back. I'll use the torch, then I'm out of here. Okay, now let's look at this treasure chest real quick. And for those of you wondering, no, you cannot open it or anything. I called Nintendo Power Gameplay Counseling Hotline a long time ago. They asked me this. You cannot open up that chest. There's just, just there. You can't open it. So don't even bother. Okay, let's, let's so let's go to this door right here. This long, cold hallway is lined on either side by half a dozen coffins. Now this is where you fight Dracula, so you gotta watch out. This is where you use the spear. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, let's open this. Ah! That was bear. I just got trolled about a troll there. It's a banshee. You're all right, but it's very hard to hear. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that affects you at all in the gameplay. So I guess that was just for the lulls. I don't know. So let's open this one. A mummy stands silently before you. Don't worry, it, it's just a dead mummy, it can't attack you or nothing. Let's take a closer look at it. This carefully embalmed six-footer stands straight and still. His name is Emotep, and he's from the Mummy series. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, now you burn the mummy with your torch. The mummy bursts into flames, leaving behind a scepter among the ashes. And yes, you will need this, the scepter, of course. No! Ah, there we go. The jewel-studded scepter is truly made for a king. Now that right there gives you a clue for what you should do with that scepter later on. So let's go ahead and take it. Let's open up the next coffin. It's a bag. It's a leather pouch. It's a leather pouch! I mean, did, I, did Don West narrate this game or something? I mean, <laughs> did he write the narration for this game? It's a leather pouch! Oh man, I can't believe it! Alright, so open the bag, take the copper coins, or cop coins, whatever. You will need some of these later on in the game. It's creepy music. It's pretty awesome though. Perfect music for this game, perfect. The lid of the coffin is open. This green slime is quite disgusting. Let's look at it. 
The green slime is very thick and is warm to the touch. Let's open this next one. You try to pass through the slime, but it engulfs your body, dissolving it in seconds. Wow. Dot, dot, dot. You die instantly. No pain, no nothing. You are slimed. Ha! Ha, <laughs> okay. I think the uh, Pink Floyd music should have played right there when I died. If you remember the lyrics to the song, you'll, you'll probably get that reference, uh, points from reference. You throw a sword into your chest. Blood begins to flow. Suicide won't help you in your quest. The Warlock Lord will surely triumph now. I just pwned myself. And yes, uh, uh, in addition to the many ways to die in this game, you can also kill yourself. You thrust arrow into your chest. Blood. That's the same thing as saying. I thought I said something different. That's that's awesome that Kimco or whoever made this game uh, allowed you to kill yourself just for the laws. I mean, that's it, it, what makes this game even more fun. Oh, nothing. Well, that oh, that torch is not lit, you idiot. I'm gonna burn myself. See what happens. I think you die. I don't remember. Let's see real quick. You now have terrific second degree burns on your hands. <laughs> that sucked. Use a spear myself. Oh, it's the same thing. Say something different. One more way to kill myself. The hammer I probably does say the same thing. I don't remember. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was only, it was only fun the first time, man. Let's move on. Go back in here. We gotta take these items again. Ah, come on, aim. Ugh. That's probably the only thing I hate about this game is that you gotta be, you know, accurate and try to select the item you're trying to take or whatever, and then you. If it's slightly off, well, you know, it says, oh, you can't take it. Uh. Alright, take the cop coins. Oh, that music. Let's see if you can open this one. No, you can't open that coffin. Okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to allow my torch to burn out. Unless I die first some other way. Just to show you what happens when you, when your torch goes out and how you die. Okay, I don't think you need a broom at all in this game, but I'll take it anyway. What? Oh, yeah, you got to hit these mirrors with a hammer. You have opened a magic portal into deep space. You are immediately sucked through. That sucks. <laughs> the lack of air causes you to quickly lose consciousness. The Grim Reaper quickly embraces you. That's pretty awesome back then. I was like, so you opened a portal to deep space. Wow. But you would expect that in a game like this. Use a hammer on the middle one. Bellowing like some Norse god, you smash the hammer into the mirror. The sha the shatter you shatter the shatter the mirror, revealing a door! An iron door! Let's now let's hit this mirror now, see what happens. As soon as you break the mirror, shards of glass fly through the air and slice into your body. Blood pours from your wounds, and your body slumps to the floor. Wow. Ouch. That's a brutal death. Oh, 
I just take these items again and go through the middle door. Now, you know what? Let me go down here. This trap door. Uh oh. You jump down the hole and, after a couple of moments, hit the floor! It seems that you have broken both of your legs. Ouch. It's only a matter of time before you die. You can die from broken legs? Like. Anyway, see you guys in part three. God bless and take care. Welcome back to part three of Time to Play Shadowgate. As I'm back in this fun house again. Let me hit the mi middle mirror again to get to the door. Now let's go through the door. Ah, dang it, that's right, you gotta have key three. Well then let's go get key three. Now let's go through this door on the right. Haven't been through here yet. Whoa. A shark swims by as if patrolling this calm pool. Let's take a look at the skeleton. A lime covered skeleton stares at you through eyeless sockets. I love how this game just describes almost everything in in scary detail. Let's swim through it. <laughs> As you swim toward the skeleton like an idiot, you feel the jaws of a shark grab you and pull you under. You curse yourself for using your body as bait. Even before the life has left your body, the lake will be filled with your own blood. See, it's that stuff right there, those deaths right there. Playing this game as a kid, as hard as it was, and reading all the different ways you die, this game was just pure ECW. Now let's go through the door this time instead of swimming through the pool like an idiot. Water cascades over a subterranean cliff into a cool, clean stream. Oh, that wasn't scary. Alright, let's take these stones here. Don't leave no stone unturned in this game. This game can be stone cold. I should be stoned for making these bad puns. And as you guessed, I am stoned right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, take... Yes, you can! Take the stone off the ground, you idiot! I go through that little opening right there. And you end up in this small room. Ah, uh, stupid music. You hit the rock as hard as you can. When I'm fighting the rock, oh, not the wrestler. Okay, the loose rock falls down as if hinged to the to the, uh, to the wall. I about to say the floor. It's a leather pouch. You can't take it. Yes, you can. The douchebag one was taken. Let's open the douche bag. The douche bag is open. Nothing but a big pile of sh in it. No, uh. Three large jewels. Let's take the jewels. The blue gem is in hand. The red gem is in hand. And blah, blah, blah. Uh-oh. Your torch goes out with a fizzle. With outstretched arms, you move slowly, looking for a light. Suddenly, you trip over something. Smash! You fall face first to the floor! ECW! ECW! I mean, what did I trip over? And you fall face... Face flat to the floor. Fat face, how you say it? You fall flat on your face, and so to speak, in this game. And, uh, uh, I mean, but... A lot of people fall on their face all the time. They don't kill them unless they fell off building or something. I mean, anyway, that was an interesting death. That's how you die when your torch goes out. All right, now let me get the juice bag again. I'll light my torch first. I have to hear that annoying music. All 
Let's look at these jewels real quick. Let's see the descriptions. It's a dark blue gemstone that is as big as the pommel of a sword. Huh. It's a fine red ruby. Oh, come on, you could do better than that. Oh. Its color reminds you of your adventures across the sea of blood. Whoa. Like the one I just died in earlier? My own blood? It's a white stone of unknown origin. A fine thing to gamble away in a good card game! Alright, well let's take him again and get the heck out of here. Alright, does the shark... Do we have to wait for the shark to swim across the screen before moving on? Come on. We know it's a shark in there. Okay, now. Let's go through here. No. Wrong room. Can't go back in there yet. I need to get key three. You stupid idiot. Alright, now this is where you use the white jewel. Or the gem. Jewel. Whatever you want to call it. Let's skip and say, collect all the gems. Alright. I want to put it in that little hole right there. Uh, what? Oh, come on, my finger is right there. I mean, really. Fine, leave it there? I forgot what you do then. What? <laughs> yes, it is best that I do that. Come on, programmers. You don't know how to beat the own game you programmed? What the heck is going on here? I know you put the white gem right there. I know you do. That's what I did the first time, you stupid idiot. How stupid are you? Alright. The gem fits perfectly into the hole. It's about time. A small crystal sphere magically appears on the stand! Let's look at it. This crystal sphere is as cold as ice. Hmm. That gives me an idea. Let's take it. No, moron. Pay attention to what's going on. Let's watch the shark swim across the pool again. Alright. Now you're going to leave the ice cold sphere in the pool so that it freezes it. You drop the sphere into the lake and notice the ripples disappearing as the water turns into ice. I ran out of breath there, so I was talking funny. Alright. Now we can take the key. Key three. E E three. Uh. I have the key to beat this game. Strategy is the key to beat this game. Okay. Um. Now we can open this door. This fun house. The, oh. Well, let's use the key first. You stupid moron. There you go. And once again, the game gets excited when you open a locked door. This room is incredibly hot! This must be what the lower levels of Gehenna are like. The heat is unbearable, and you have to turn back. Yep, that's right. We gotta go back, and I believe we get another item that's gonna put out the fire. Or something like that I forgot now in part two I messed up uh, there is a purpose in this room right here that's those are you know switches not uh, torches that's why you couldn't take them there were switches and then you open up the secret passage and you go through here and you stand at the edge of a deep chasm from the darkness below rises the screams of the undead this cave is hewn roughly in the chasm's wall Let's look at this bridge right here. This shabby bridge is held together with nothing but frayed ropes and something. The ropes are indeed in bad condition. Judging by the intricate workmanship, this bridge seems to be quite sturdy. Let's go on this bridge. <laughs> you can't do that, huh? Oh, wait. Messed up. I got... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we gotta point the actual room to move. 
As you reach the middle of the bridge, it collapses under your feet. The bridge won't hold you. You can't cross unless you lose some weight. Well, <laughs> you gotta be careful to not burn any bridges in this game. Let's go try this again. up here. Whoa! What's this? A wraith is standing in your way, daring, dar barring your path. Dang, I need glasses. Well, I got glasses, but I need to update my glasses. The torches in hand. Let's take these torches real quick. Hope that thing don't kill me. All I want is the torches. Leave me alone. Let's look at it. It's a shadow wraith, a hideous specter, who eternally walks the line between life and death. This heavy cloak contains no frivolous adornments, such as pockets or a hood. Well, hmm. In part four, let's see if I can figure out how to get past this part. Welcome back to part four, as I try to get past this guy, or thing, whatever it's called. And I remember how. He got up. Okay, went well out that way. He used a torch on this other torch, and... And this is what happens. When they shout, you throw the flaming torch at it. Whoa. With a blinding flash, the white flame engulfs the undead appar appar apparition appreciation. When you open your eyes again, the wraith is gone. Cool. Yeah, when I got to that part and I was a kid, I could not figure out what the heck to do right here. And the cloak is in hand. Now let's get out of here. And the cloak, that is what you use to be able to stay in that fire room. But won't wearing a cloak make you hotter? If you wear something in a hot room, is that supposed to make you hotter? Anyway, I don't know. Maybe it's a magical cloak that has a, a ice cool feeling in it. I don't know. Anyway, then again, I don't know anything about cloaks. I never wore one, so I'm sure the programmers of this game know more about cloaks than I do. And here we go. Oh, oh, well, I gotta put on the cloak first for that to work. I want to put it on, you moron. Okay. You try on the cloak and find it very unbecoming. It barely fits over your armor. I don't care as long as it gets me through this game. You can't, you can't make it through this game without a cloak. It's so hot. Oh, I already read this. Okay. This time it's not kicking me out of the room. Now let's go through this door and move on. Suddenly, you feel a gust of wind. Ah! Bowser! It's Bear. <laughs> bear 13 now knocks you across the room. Oh, shut up! <laughs> a flaming horror appears at the end of the bridge. It's Bear 13 and he shouts, Shut up! <laughs> Ouch! I got flamed. Alright, let's try this again. Apparently, what you gotta do is... Well, let him back in real quick. Now, let's get out of here. We gotta find a way. See, he's a fire drake, and... In order to get rid of the fire drake... You gotta get rid of the fire first. So, let's do that. But I gotta leave this room first. Light the torch so I have to hear that annoying music. What I gotta do is melt this ice water real quick or temporarily. The torch melts away the ice over the sphere, allowing it to float to the surface. Not surprisingly, the lake quickly refreezes. So I gotta retake the sphere, the sphere, 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 go back to the fire room. Throw the sphere into the fire. Okay, now what? You're gonna match my sphere. 
you hurl the spear into the fire below you. The hellspawn flames quickly vanish as soon as the spear touches them. With nothing to feed itself on, the fire drake immediately follows suit. There we go. Now let's move on. A sharp cold wind wisps up over the ledge of the deep dark chasm. Ah! What? As you step on the bridge, a troll appears and says, This bridge is mine. Oh, great, now I'm getting trolled here on YouTube. It'll cost you a gold coin to cross. Oh yeah? It'll cost me a fist? The troll cries, You can't trick me! The troll then flags your video and causes you to get suspended from YouTube. Ah, dang, I skipped over that part. I think it said the Grim Reaper, R Reaper, Weeper, the, the Grim Reaper awaits below to catch you. All right. Use the spear here to knock him off of here. The troll falls silently into the dark cavern. You listen, but you do not hear him crash. Hmm. Anyway, let's move on. The moon casts a brilliant shadow over the grounds of the courtyard. So now we gotta fight Sloth. Love this music right here. The Cyclops or Sloth stands before you, going, You're coming home with me now because I love you. Ear twitches. Look at the well. The teeth marks of water rats are evident on this rope. Well, I actually I wanted to look down the well, but anyway. The crank turns rather easily at the end of the rope. There is a small bucket. The bucket is open. The bucket was already open, but I know what it means. Um, the gauntlet is in hand. Yeah, that's a good Clint Eastwood movie. A battle cry dies in your throat as the Cyclops crushes your skull with his club. <laughs> as the game decides to chop and slow itself real quick. Alright, there we go. Let's try this again. Let's look at myself. Thou art truly a brave knight! You are wearing the cloak. The cloak. Alright. Let's open it again. I don't think it saved the uh, gauntlet. Alrighty, here's what I need to do. I need to use a slingshot on him. I put the stone in the sling first. Uh, what? Oh, okay, well then use it. Use stone and sling, okay. You put the small stone in the sling. Alright, now let's let's hit him with it. What? What? Oh, use sling next. As soon as you start twirling the sling, a magical influence takes over your body. You cry out, Death to the Philistine! And release the stone. Bullseye! ECW. Nice. So I guess you're playing as David in this game. So 
long drafty hallway with one flight of stairs and several open passages. Okay, am I playing Deja Vu again? This book looks quite old. The words, the prophecy, is written upon it. Let's open the book. You can't read the strange writing because you can't read and you're illiterate. The book is in hand. Fine, let's take it. Maybe we'll somehow read it later. It seems to be the skull of some unfortunate individual. Here we go, Skull Castle. Oh, yeah, I better take this. This is the same map Skip Rogers used to beat Platoon. The book is open and examined. What? I didn't mean to look at a open a book. I just wanted to look at the shelf. Okay, the words, whatever it said. All right. Anyway, the map is in hand. The skull is in hand. Oh. You go snooping around this desk real quick. Ooh, look what we got. These glasses are worn. They've probably been used for a long time. It's a small iron key. A nice description there. It's an ancient leather-bound parchment. It's an ancient leather-bound... Ugh! Well, I'm going to stop right here and continue this in part cinco. Until then, God bless and take care. Welcome to part cinco of Time to Play Shadowgate. As I finish taking these scrolls here. Alright, let's see, let's see what all these items are all about. Let's take a look here. My inventory is getting big now. It's taking me forever to get to where I need to go. Here we go. Let's open this, see what it says. Your hands be oh that's not what it says, you just tell them what <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited to read the scroll. Lands under the heavens, the key to the world. Terra ten something. You've learned one magic spell. Alright, cool. As the spell was chanted, the scroll three quickly vanished. Whoa. Finally learned a spell in this game. Your scroll four now. I've read the scroll. To move the sun from far to near, light is what the darkness fears. Instantaneous illumination. Something. You've learned one magic spell. I mean, another magic spell. I think that's, these are the two spells I've learned. Uh, did I learn some more earlier? Oh, heck, I don't remember. Anyway, these spells will come in handy. Going here. It smells like a kennel in here, and there are no windows through which to circulate fresh air. That's not good. Ugh! There's a strange, poisonous looking liquid in the pot. It really stinks! It's an empty test tube and a wooden rack. That's a tiny ball to point at. This small silver vial glows with a lustrous shine. You notice that the bottle is impossibly light. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with the light. This jar is extremely slimy. This small silver vial glows with a lustrous... Wait a minute. Okay, now that's giving me a clue to what to do later on in the game. This horseshoe seems to have taken quite a beating. This steel mesh cage rattles constantly. A simple latch secures it. Let's open it. What? You remove the latch and a mutated dog pounces on you. Oh man, that's, that don't sound good. It looks like the doctor put something strange. Wait, there's a doctor in this castle somewhere? Before you can do anything else, the mutation quickly rips you apart. Ouch. Well, yeah, I expected to die after seeing that. 
I mean, the game, I know dogs have been around since the beginning of time, but I didn't expect to be attacked by a dog in a game like this. <laughs> Maybe like a dragon or something, yeah, but not a dog. Anyway. Let's take all this stuff that we looked at. As we listen to this Arabian music, whatever kind of music it is, makes me feel like a snake's about to come out of a pot. You can't. Yes, I can. Look. Oh, you see that? That's how I kind of pointed off of the bottle, and I still was able to take it at that at that time. But ah, uh, that's when this game gets tedious. When you try to take something, and you got to be precise in where you point at where you can take it. But anyway, yeah, as I take all these items here. Let's, um, yeah, you know what, I, well, I can't open that, it won't, what's the point in getting these bottles if you can't open them, oh, what's this down here, that looks different from everything else, lab animals can be chained to this stone while performing experiments on them. Yeah, where's the main society back then? What the main society existed around this time? <laughs> but um, okay, I thought you're supposed to open it. I forgot what to do there. You know what? I'm gonna have to come back to that later and figure figure out what to do. You stand in a small garden. The only sound is of falling water in the night. I love this music right here. And this part of the game looks pretty ECW. This exquisite marble fountain is shaped into the image of a sea serpent. From its mouth spews an ac acidic liquid. It's a small wooden flute. It looks like it could make wonderful music. Well, let's take it. As you reach for- Aw, oh, sounds like I'm gonna die. You touch the water and paint explodes through your hand. Oh yeah, that's right. It's acid. Hello. The water is extremely acidic and obviously not good for drinking. No, you don't say. Well, how am I supposed to take this? This is how. We put on the gauntlet, which will protect you from the acidic water, and then that way you can get the wooden flute. Using the silver gauntlet, you remove the flute easily. All right. The ocarina of time is in hand. Let's play this real quick. That sound of the flute is very pretty. It takes you back in time where you fight Ganondorf. No. Um. Oh, cool. Is it real? It's still real to me! Let's take a look at this before we touch it. I don't trust anything in this game. It's a ring! Set it with the... Uh, ah, dang it. You can't... Not the tree! I don't want to take the tree, you idiot! Let's take the ring! Alright, um... Now we're go. Let's go through the door we haven't gone through yet. How about that? The door is open as the game pauses and the music stops because of sheer excitement. Now you see that? You see that carpet right when I first entered this room? That gives you a clue of what to do with the carpet, don't it? Well, here's what we're going to do. Let's look at it first. It's a beautifully woven rug. Nice description there. I'm going to do something that I did when I was a kid and I got in trouble for it. I'm going to burn this carpet with this rug. Yeah, I watched too much Beavis and Butthead when I was a kid. Um, Alright, here we go. You seem... Don't take the floor. Oh, wait. No, I'm trying to look. Well, I was, oh, I was... I was wanting to look at the key just to see if it's any kind of description. I guess I was wasting my time. I mean, well, I'm a, I'm going, I wanted to get a description of every single thing in this game for some reason. Alright, let's look at this mirror. It'd be cool if you can actually see what you look like in this game. I don't know if you did that in, uh... Yeah, you did that in Deja Vu. I don't think you got to actually see your face. Just, it says, uh, 
you look at yourself and you don't know who you are. It's a silk tapestry. Wow, that was chilling to read. The crest is in hand. What? Oh, so I can go through that door, but while I'm next to it, I can't reach the, the tapestry? I guess you have to take it off from the top, and you can't reach the top of it. I guess that's what it's talking about. Anyway, well, all these doors are locked. Gee, what do I do? Use key quad throw. Here we go again. More excitement from unlocking the door. You have entered a small corridor. Two arched doorways wait patiently for you. Yeah, I don't feel comfortable reading that. Who else waiting for me? The torches in hand? Oh yes. One of the best songs in this game. Oh! From this windy ledge, you can get an idea of the size and strength of the castle. Cool scene right here. Look how the lightning was striking, and let's look at the mountains. The sky foretells the coming of a great storm. Well, actually, I was wanted to look at the mountains, but okay. Ah! More lightning! Lightning lights up the con con controversial countryside as you stand at the lookout point. What are these here? Um, this campus pouch looks to be quite light. Close inspection reveals some druidic script on it. It's a pot of gold. The leprechaun must have skipped town. Oh, that was lame. Let's take the pot of gold. What? As you move the pot, as you smoke pot, you realize that you have fallen for the oldest trick in the book. As you are stoned, you suddenly find yourself knee-deep in the moat. It seems that the alligators really enjoy your company. Oh, brutal ECW death. See you guys in part six. God bless and take care. Welcome to Time to Play Shadowgate Part Six. As we start off in the balcony again. And this time I will not be greedy. Because this time I would take the bag. The bag three. Ooh. The douche bag three. Okay. Hey, I'm about this torch real quick. What? Oh, I said take torch, it's stupid. You can't take what you already have, you idiot. Alright, there we go. I love listening to this music. It's one of the sweetest NES soundtracks I've ever heard. Or tracks. I'll talk about one individual song. You know what I mean, shut up. Anyway, alright, so inside the bag is some money. Or three gold coins and one big coin. It has a well engraved on it. Hmm. That gives you a clue. Let's see, or it gives me a clue at least. Um, for those of you who haven't gotten this far in the game, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm try not to spoil anything. Yeah, I know this game is ancient, but I mean, you know, I try not to spoil things in my LPs. But anyway, alright, let's move away from here. <laughs> it said it's a balcony. Yeah, thank you, Castlevania 64. Whoa! It's Wega. He's even more skinnier than ever. Now, um. Let's take a closer look. Although he looks dead enough, this royal skeleton sends shivers down your spine. There seems to be something in his hand. Yeah, an axe. Oh, wait a minute. No, he... I don't think he has a right arm, does he? Ah, oh, look at that left arm right here. I thought we... What? I see nothing in his hand. Anyway. Can't make it out right there. I mean, I can think his right hand is missing or something. I don't know. Sir Hackshaw Jim Duggan's royal seal is carved on the stone pillar in favorite colors. Ho! Oh! Why not? Oh yeah, it's dead. It's hard to pry that thing out of his dead hands. Now I know there's some way to move 
one of these things over here. Either that shield or that sword. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, yes. What's fit for a king? How about a scepter? What? Yes, it is best. I remember what to do out here. You're supposed to leave the scepter. Oh, wait. Well, you gotta be specific in your command. You gotta use it. Why not leave it? You're leaving it with him. There we go. Did you want to be picky and detailed? Kimiko or Seika, whoever made this freaking game. No, not Sega. Seika. Alright, now that's how you open that little thing. A ringed shape hole. Hmm. That's an obvious clue right there, isn't it? What should I put in the hole? The ring, Terror's Realm. Ugh, no, I don't think so. Ugh, the game looks horrible. What? I've already taken the ring, you stupid idiot! Come on, man! I love this game, but sometimes it gets my freaking nerves. There you go. I guess we'll use it in the hole. The ring fits perfectly. The throne magically rises, revealing a secret passage. Passageway. Alright, let's go down there. This hallway is made of large granite slabs. Alright, let's take all these torches real quick. Alright, a jackpot of torches here. As we get to listen to some more of this awesome music. Alright. Oh! Without thinking, you jump through the opening and immediately hear a loud click. Suddenly, the granite slab above you gives way and crushes you beneath it. Ooh. It breaks every bone in your body. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, this game is brutal. You don't tell a little kid that when he's playing this game. What were they thinking? No, just kidding. Alright. Now, yeah, let me light the torch real quick. Do whatever I can to prevent hearing that horrible music of when your torch is about to go out. And well, let's take these torches again. Ah! No, don't take what you already have, you idiot. <sighs> Seriously, I, I wish I was using my mouse to play this game instead of the freaking controller to control this hand. Oh, on the opposite wall are a pair of stone beasts guarding a dark archway. Guarding a dark archfiend. Uh oh Suddenly, the beasts begin to shudder and their eyes begin to glow red. Oh, of course, what? Hmm, what a shocker. I'm about to get killed by these two statues. The gargoyles, angered at your presence, spring from their frozen state and rip you to pieces. Well, I didn't do nothing to them. I just wanted to go in the door, on, in the doorway. There's not enough left of you to even feed the birds. Wow. Another brutal ECW death. Okay, why would the Grim Reaper come after me if there's not enough pieces left for me for the birds? What is, what is he going to do with the pieces? Or ashes, whatever they grinded me to. Let's go a different way. Sulfurous fumes rise from the hot molten lava some 30 feet below you. Swimming would not be wise. No, no kidding, I didn't know that. I thought you'd be able to swim in that lava. You know what? I'm going to do it anyway, because this is my favorite death in the entire game. Watch this. Shouting a battle cry. You catapult yourself off to the platform. You are brave, warrior, but stupid. Your body explodes as you plunge into the lava. <laughs> oh, man, when I read that when I was a kid, I thought it was hilarious. I think I was desperate to get past that part of something. Like, I thought it might be the lava in Mario 3. You know, the one of the dark world levels where you can swim through that lava and it won't even hurt you. You can swim, under, swim, uh, swim, swim, under, swim under the sheet. Ah, my, wow. I can't even talk right now. I'm just still thinking about that death. I was going to say, you can swim under the ship in that one level, Mario 3, in that lava and it won't hurt you. Maybe that's what I was thinking right here. I don't know. But anyway, I am now finally using those pair of glasses that I got. And what you gotta do is open the book with the glasses and read what's in the book.
the light grows faint. The path winds, 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 wounds red. The seed of the dream, where the evil is free, where the sword is hung, he must place the key. Blah 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 blah. Let's get going. And we learn a new spell. Motor Motoro rises. Motoro from Mortal Kombat 3. The book quickly vanishes. What a surprise. Okay, now what do you do here? Is you gotta use that spell in order to advance further from this room. If I can. Ah, oh, man, my inventory is getting too big now. The spell was chanted. Motari. The statue lowers and a large platform rises out of the lava. You now have a way across. Alright. Stalactite might surround this room like the cavernous jaws of a huge beast. Go down that hole like an idiot. <laughs> oh, what a surprise! Bear 13 comes to kill me. He decides to eat you for breakfast. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Got so many ways of dying in this game. So many ways of getting pwned. Now, in order to get through that doorway without the gargoyles ripping you apart, you gotta chant another spell called Illumina. Suddenly, the cavern is so bright that you have to shade your eyes. I guess I'm a shady person then. It takes you a few moments to regain your senses from the Nova Burst. It seems the gargoyles were also affected and haven't yet recovered from the spell. Cool, so now we can move quickly. We can move quickly. Like, this is like a point and click game. You have, you have not a time limit or anything right here, but move. Now we can move into this room right here. As we look at the description of the door, see how awesome it is. These wooden planks act as a cover for the well. Now, you know, as I try to open the door, I don't think you can actually open that door. I don't remember. I guess we'll find out later on. But you can't open the well. Let's go down the well. Oh, oh, what a shocker. I fall to my death. <laughs> See no water below. The well was deeper than you imagined. You have just broken every bone in your body. Again. <laughs> oh man. Um, I'm gonna go back. I'm backtrack here. I'm gonna go way back. Now, actually, hold on a second. Let me go here first. Well. Okay, I think you need different keys for each of these doors. I forgot. Let me see. I'm not sure if I have the keys to open these other doors. Key Cinco? Nope. Nope. Ugh. Okay, uh... Honestly, I forgot what to do here. <laughs> um... Yeah, this game is all about memorization, and I don't remember what to do next. Uh, let me see. Yeah, take care of that real quick. Okay, let's get out of here. Now's the time to backtrack way back. What? Okay, how did I get past him? If he's alive again. You know what I mean? How did I get past him? Uh, I, I don't know. I just gotta pwn him again when I go back. All right. Let's see, no, let's go back here. Uh, all right, let's go through here. No. Nope. Come on 
now. I think, Ronnie. What are you? It's been about a year since I've beaten this game. I think I go through here. No, idiot. There we go. Well, mm, ah, yes. Now remember this room. Here's how you get across that snake bridge. Wait a minute. Well, I forgot how you supposed to use these bottles if you can't open them. Oh yeah, you gotta use. <laughs> I'm gonna use it on myself, idiot. Or drink it. Glug, 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 glug. You swallow the vicious liquid. It's like drinking tar. Ugh. Surprised you didn't get killed from that. Okay, here's the bottle. You drink the liquid and immediately begin to rise in the air. And that's how you get across the bridge. Whoa! A giant snake confronts you in this small cave. Hmm. Well, hmm, what to do here? We'll figure it out in part 7. God bless and take care. Welcome to part 7 of Time to Play Shadowgate. This is Ron Moore, and I apologize that the audio in this video sucks, with the left speaker being louder than the right. On your end, I don't know, but uh, anyway, back to the game. Uh, I gotta watch out for the snake here. I think it's about to strike me. Upon closer inspection, you laugh at your foolishness. It is only a statue. Oh, <laughs> boy, do I feel stupid. Okay then, um, you know what, I honestly forgot what to do here, <laughs> um, I think you're supposed to speak a spell to make it open up. I noticed what you gotta do, you gotta open the spell, I mean, uh, open the snake, open the statue of the snake with a spell, and that did not work, um, well let's see here. And no, that didn't work either. That that was a fail. This music is scary. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get out of here. Um. Yeah, I think I gotta do something and come back later, and uh, I'll figure it out later. In the meantime, let's backtrack here a little. Why that door is closed. I didn't close it. Ah, now this room looked familiar. This is the room that I died at when I fell through that hole that hole up there. Um, so let me go ahead and take this torch. As we listen to this circus music again. And of course, it's an ancient leather-bound parchment. Small silver bottle. What is it? It sure smells terrible. This small silver vial glows with a lustrous shine. You notice that? Oh wait, it's the same bottle I had before. All right, let's go ahead and take this scroll and take these bottles. Take that one again too, just in case I need it again. Let's go ahead and uh, drink bottle one here, cause I'm real thirsty, I guess. As you consume the liquid in the vial, your body convulses and death spasms quickly follow. Oh. Ouch. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, I got pwned right there. Another horrible death. Ah, let's take all this stuff again. Yeah, don't take the other one because the other bottle will kill you. Let's open scroll one. And once again, my hands begin to sweat with extreme excitement over reading this scroll. Five to find. Three are one. One gives access to the bladed sun. The silver orb to banish below. The staff of ages to vanish the foe. 
or Vanquish. Joining to the Golden Blade, the last to invoke the Platinum Horn. Wait a minute, that part don't rhyme. Oh, I'm not gonna learn a spell? Oh, well, that sucked. Uh, it's, it's actually a clue to help you out later on in the game. Now let's look at this. This sign reads Epor. Look at it again. Epor, Epor, Epor. You got it! It seems to... It seems to some sort of... Ma well, I didn't notice that till now. A typo right there. You've learned one magic spell. And what does Epor say backwards? The spell was chanted. Epor. There are many strange things in this world. When you said the magic spell, the rope moved. Having stretched up to the hole, the rope stops moving. Alright. But nothing special because I've already been in that room, so... Let's take a look at this over here. Something looks a little different. Hmm. Is it will? There we go. Secret passage. The cold water from the limestone drips on your neck, sending shivers down your spine. This game tries too hard to scare you. <laughs> and it worked when I was a kid. Hmm, a hole. I wonder if it's trying to tell me that I need to put something there. How about the blue gem? We haven't used that yet, have we? Okay. As soon as you place the blue gem in the hole, you hear the sound of a grinding stone. The wall slowly rises to reveal a magical image of an old wizard. Hey, it's the character from Solstice. Listen, warrior. The Warlock Lord can only be defeated by thy courage and the Staff of Ages. Remember, five to find, three for the staff. One to be the key, and one to be thy pathway. Have thy wits about thee, warrior. Fare thee well. The wall slides back into place. Hiding the image from the sight, a scroll appears. Another scroll. Oh, man. Take the scroll, not the ground. Alright, let's take a look at scroll dos. You've read the scroll, okay, and... The scroll reads, As the shadow of the wind, thou shalt be. Humana. Alright, another spell. You've learned one magic spell. And what a shocker, it disappears. The scroll. All right, let's get out of here. Wait a minute, let me see real quick. Did I miss a room back there? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, idiot, go back. All right, I'm tired of listening to this circus music. Let's go. All right, back this brick. What? Ah, oh, the YouTube troll is back. Dang, I don't have my spear. I'm gonna use something else to pwn him here. Um, that freaking circus music again. Um, I don't have a bow, but let me throw the arrow at him and see what happens. With one swift motion, the troll launches his spear and runs you through. Oh! The spear pierces your chest and exits through your back. Oh, man. That's some Rambo stuff right there. Uh, well, now see, if I was Rambo and I had a bow with that arrow, then I would have pwned the troll. You know? Okay, he wants them to pay him, but, you know, just like you don't feed the trolls, you don't pay them either. So, here's what you do. You use your new spell here. Humana. As soon as the magic is invoked, you lose sight of yourself. You're as invisible as the wind! Cool. Ah, oh, great, I gotta fight Sloth again. I'm gonna try to use a, I think a sword this time would kill it permanently, what I was told. 
Or did I do it before? I, yeah, I did. <sighs> I think some. Oh, I think actually somebody told me to use a spear on that on Sloth, and then it'll kill him permanently, so that he'll stop getting back up every time you go back into the room. Oh, wait a minute! Oh, dang, I forgot to use the spell again. Hold on. Ugh. I got trolled again. Um. There we go. Okay, let me use another stone here. David versus Goliath 2. Okay, now let's go through one of these doors here that we, that we haven't been through yet. Ah, this music. <laughs> I think I'd rather listen to the circus music. Oh, come on. Finally. See, I messed up the last time. I didn't select the key again. Or oh, I might select the wrong key the last time I was in this room. In the last part. Or well, the part before that, I don't remember. But anyway, let's go to this room. And, whoa! It appears to be a sphinx. It looks at you indifferently. Let's take a closer look. You have stumbled upon a sphinx. It has the body of a lion and the face of Butthead. And yeah, I knew you couldn't do that. I just want to try to do that for the lols. You can't take those torches. And as I try to move, he speaks and says, Who are you? Who are you? No one may pass without my permission. To pass, you must answer a riddle. It has towns, but no houses. Forests, but no trees. Rivers, but no fish. Dost thou know? Bring me the answer to my riddle, and I shall let thee pass. I'll just hit you. Oh, what? Whoa. Suddenly, the room begins to fade. It seems that the Sphinx magic has taken you, too. Wow. Well, at least I didn't get, at least I didn't get killed. Let's use this spell for the third time, and... Okay, I'm, I'm about to run out of stones here. Then how am I going to kill him? I'm sure there's got to be another way to kill him. Maybe use the Humana spell. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet, but... So happens I have another stone, so let's use that to pwn him again. This time, stay down, you idiot. Alright, now let's go back to the Sphinx room. Alright. Let's answer this riddle. And yes, I do know the answer to that riddle. And so does Skip Rogers. Use the map as that's the answer to the riddle. You have correctly answered my riddle. Warrior, thou may pass. Alright. A telescope is beside the window. A star map is on the wall. This must be an observatory. I love this music right here. Oh, I love hearing this music. It's awesome. It's an uh of course. I really want to meet the composer of this of the music in this game or composers. I don't know if it's just one or what, but awesome job with the music in this game. As you look through the telescope, you have you are amazed by the clarity of the night sky. The scroll of five is in hand now. Wait a minute, back then in ancient castle times they had telescopes like that and stuff? I don't know. I'm not a history buff, so what I don't know. Anyway, observing the stars. The throne constellation appears once every five summers. Legend says that it is a portal to another land. Thanks, that helped a lot. The star is in hand. Whoa! 
you are so captivated by the woman's beauty that you momentarily forget her predicament. Yes, in the moonlight she is even more beautiful. Let's take a closer look. This fine lass lies upon the floor, chained to the wall. She is extremely beautiful. Yes, we know that she's beautiful already. Okay, let's see if I can speak to her. It doesn't seem... It? You mean she doesn't seem to understand what you're saying? What is this next to her? It's some sort of spike that is made of precious metals. Ouch. The tips are as sharp as needles. Let's take that. Whoa! With a loud roar, the wolf pounces on you, taking your life. The wolf's powerful jaws rip your throat out. Whoa! I think Rainbow 4 took a page out of this game. <laughs> See you guys in part 8. If I can recover from this, God bless and take care. Welcome to part 8 of Time to Play Shadowgate. How, that rhymed. 8, gate. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, just remembered you need to move this star map here to get this purple hairspray bottle or whatever it is. Ah, oh, it's a rod. And of course we're going to need that, so let's take that. Light my torch real quick. And let's get out of here. Well, let's go up here and kill this thing. Your aim is true as you plunge the silver arrow into the beautiful woman. The beautiful lady suddenly transforms into a wolf. What a surprise! I know it's a wolf. Let me take this real quick. The blade. And let's take a look out this window. Uh, uh, oops. <laughs> With a cry, you jump to your death. It takes only a couple of seconds before you hit the bottom with a thud. I think it's awesome how you can just... There's so many ways of dying in this game and doing something as stupid and clumsy like that, that that's, that's hilarious. But because I want to be stupid and show off all the deaths in this game, I have to go through this again. But there'll be no problem. Dang, I had to use a torch again, too. It cost me another torch. I think it did. I thought I had four, three or four left. I'm losing count, but yeah, I'm starting to run out of torches in this game. and I forgot what happens when you finally run out of torches. I guess you just have to hurry up and beat the game before you... Before the torch goes out, I don't know. Now I remember this room right here, and I couldn't. Uh, I figured out what to do out right there. I just remembered you gotta move that, or use that instead of open that. And it appears to be a bottle of water. Let's take the water. Now, let's go back to this little library, room, whatever it is. And as you guessed, yes, the bookcase is a secret passage. The bookcase slowly slides away, revealing a hidden passage. Yeah, see, the game gets excited when you open up a regular door, but not when you find a secret passage. Anyway, alright, so, it looks like we're in somebody's house now. Take a look at what we got here. It is a globe mounted on a stand for display. It shows all the known lands. Looking closely, you can see a seam along the equator. Hmm. This is where we speak our newly acquired spell. Terac, terac, teracdactyl, whatever it is. A large crack appears around the equator of the globe. So what do we do now? We open the globe. The globe is open. And inside the globe is bottle 5. I'm not sure if I need that, but I'm going to go ahead and take it anyway. And key 6. Now these other items in the room, you're not going to need those. Um, all these useless items you pick up in this game, 
Those are used to answer the Sphinx's riddle. He'll ask you different riddles, like, you know, um, like the broom that I picked up in that mirror room. You're not going to need that in the game, unless you want to get to the Sphinx and you have to ask you that question. So it is a good idea to take all these items that you see. Okay, so, um, alright, although the evening air is cool, this small circular room radiates a fervent heat. What is this? Well, it's a horn, obviously. This horn is forged of flawless platinum. Its beauty is unbelievable! Okay, well then let's take it! Whoa! Ah! A large fireball suddenly appears in the room and causes you to shield your eyes. When you open them, you notice that the fire has changed into something far more menacing. Man, he ain't gonna do nothing, man. I hit him in his mouth. The demon dog snarls and pounces on you. Its teeth sink deep into your flesh. Okay, that wasn't a good idea. I guess he is going to do something. Alright. Let's do this again. This time, let's do it right. So, how do you beat this thing? Well, you use your water on it. Yep. But it's not just water, it's holy water. The holy water has sent the hellhound back to the place where it was spawned. The flame died out. The room is quiet, as though nothing had happened. Now when I first got to this spot when I was a kid, I could not figure out how the heck to beat that thing. That I think I found out through a gameplay counselor uh, from Nintendo and he told me. and. So yeah, there you go, and yeah, well, now we face something even more dangerous and intimidating. It's a wi wi wyvern? Wyvern? This rather heavy talis talisman, is that a new Mega Man character or what? Alright, let's take this. With the speed of lightning, the Wyvern wraps its tail around your neck. You die, screaming silently. Wow, yeah. When I read that when I was a kid, I'm like, wow, I mean, that's just... Imagine dying that way, and you're screaming like, help me, help me, yeah. Yeah, so wow, that's, um, that's a horrible death. Or ECW death. Now, how do you get rid of this thing? Well... First, this a uh, torch, <laughs> and all right. Um, what you do is to beat this thing, you use one star power. The star becomes a flash of light as you launch it. As you one star the dragon's video, he explodes to a million pieces. I guess that joke would work if we still had the star rating system but anyway now we acquire the talisman and let's move on now go back to the balcony here and we're going to use our new item the rod which is actually a lightning rod Suddenly, this guy seems to be on fire as a bolt of pure lightning strikes the rod. Or, strikes the rod! You are startled to see a skeletal hand rise from a hole that has formed at your feet. It then grabs your feet and pulls you under. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you probably thought this was going to happen, did you? <laughs> uh, uh It's a wand of sorts. Carved into the side of the wand is a small picture of a serpent. Hmm. Well, let's take it. The wand is in hand. As you take the wand from the skeletal hand, it begins to descend. The hole then closes up as if it had never been. Yeah, shut your hole. Ah! Wow. Um, alright. Now I need to go back. Ah, oh, you again. Now, how do I get past the troll right there if I'm going back? I mean, wouldn't he like stop me right there? You can't cross the bridge. Um, 
I need to go back to the room where the snake statue is at. And whoa, that's way too far back. Let's see if I can remember where the room is at. Ah, right, here we go. And let's use ball two to make ourselves light again so we can get up the up the bridge and into the room. Well, I'm feeling lightheaded. <laughs> All right. Now, what we do here is we use our newly acquired weapon or item, whatever, the wand, and use it on the snake statue. The snake begins to shake and shudder. Is it just your eyes or is it shrinking? The serpentine statue begins to change. It grows smaller and smaller. It demetalizes and forms anew as a staff of tremendous beauty. Druidic script winds its way around the staff. You can feel power emanating from it. Well, let's take it. Sounds like something we may need to use in this game. And let's move on. Okay, let's use the Humana thing again. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but um, that spear he has in his hand, I think that's my spear that I used to temporarily kill him a few videos back. And now I'm going to permanently kill this guy, because I think Sonic2323, or if I said his name right, told me how to permanently kill this thing. So let's knock it out with the slingshot again, or with the stone. Ugh. Let's reselect the sling. <laughs> All right, it's knocked out again. This time, let's kill it. Perform the coup de grace, or however you say it. The dr you drive the sword deep into the cyclops. Blood pours out of the wound and onto the grass. Grass, dead grass, I guess. Then, um, all right. Finally, got rid of that freaking thing. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to go. I need to go back to that room again. I probably will, since I've been there 20 times already. Alright, so now let's go back to the room where I got killed by that giant purple pink monster, whatever it was. Alright, here we go. Now, remember the room with the Sphinx? On the stairs, there was symbols of of these handles right here telling me what order to pull these handles so here we go and when we do that it'll make that little uh, thing raise up whatever it is <laughs> Scree! what it'll make the cylinder rise up revealing the silver orb And this game is obviously very excited about this, so let's go ahead and take it. And that would be it for part 8, so stay tuned for part 9. God bless and take care. Welcome to part 9 of Time to Play Shadowgate. Alright, so just in case you can't tell by the description of the video this is the conclusion so therefore I'm about to beat the game um, so I got everything I need it's time to go on to battle the warlock lord oh dang it <laughs> yeah speak to myself <laughs> okay um, here we go let's use this again for the 20th time and let's go through here now this time we go down this well. All right. Now what we gotta do here is drop the gold coin down the well. What? Uh oh, BS. Hold on a second. 
Oh wait, well I didn't. I got selected again. Wait, oh no. Hello, idiot. The big coin. I'm sorry. We dropped the. Wait, wait a minute. Now I know for sure you dropped the big coin. There you go. As soon as you throw the coin to the well, a huge wind erupts from within it. It reminds you of the small dust devils you see in the autumn months. No, it does. not I don't remember that. All right, down the well we go. The swirling winds carry you down the deep well and set you gently into the cavern below. You stand above a beach. What the heck? There's a beach in this castle? They had beaches back then? Well, I guess they did. I don't know. It's a great gold gong. Its beauty is enhanced by the intricate stand that supports it. You use the gong, and now you see this weird-looking Skeletor character. The ghostly fairy man doesn't look friendly. You hear a faint voice ask you for a fare. Yeah, well, life's not fair. How about I hit you in the mouth? Huh? <clears throat> now, um, let's see if I can speak to it first. It doesn't understand what I'm saying. I bet if I hit him in the face, he'll let me get on for free. Oh, well, that was weak. I forgot. I... I I thought he kills you or something. I guess not. Okay, well, it's time to pay the man. Or the ghost, whatever he is. The fairy man takes the coin and gestures you to board quickly. Yeah, you're on a time limit here. You gotta hurry up and get on. Now, oh, well, point the raft. There you go. Whoa. You climb aboard the tiny raft and soon reach the opposite bank. A stone skull stands against the far wall, screaming silently. For some reason, you get the feeling you are not in Kansas anymore. No, um. Okay, so let's take a look at this door. A closer look at this door. The jaw of the skull is made of polished stone. Oh, wow, that was an interesting description there. The shape of sword is carved in left. I know that. Just tell me. I, I thought they'd give you more details of what we're looking at, but I guess not. Yep, the jewel. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay. Let's move on here. How are we going to open this door? And when I first got to this part when I was a kid, it took me forever how to figure this out. And of course, I think the Nintendo Game Plan Counselor helped me again. You got to put the talisman on the first one. The artifact, known as the Blade of Sun, is now secured and in place. But no, that's not it. Now, you got to use the Platinum Horn. Suddenly, you hear the sound of grinding rock. The jaw of the skull begins to descend! The game's getting us out of here now. Hot wind erupts from the mouth, creating the illusion that the stone skull is alive! Alive! Alright. Let's go inside. The cavern that you have entered is by far the largest your eyes have ever gazed upon. Whoa. Far from the depths rises the most powerful creature that has ever existed. The Behemoth! And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final battle. That is the Warlock Lord standing on the on that ground, whatever it is. You wonder for a moment how you can defeat such a creature as this. How about we just uh well let me see. Let me reason with him. Yeah, I'm wasting my time reasoning with him. And, of course, I knew that was going to happen. How about I hit the Warlock Lord? He ain't going to do nothing. Oh, wait. The Warlock Lord feels your presence and knows that you are the seed that must be destroyed. Of course, he felt my presence. I, was, I think I hit him, did I? Flame shoots forth from his staff and engulfs your body. You have failed. <laughs> you are a failed troll. All right, let's try this again. Let's get serious this time. All right, let's go through this dramatic entrance again of the bad guy, or the behemoth. All right, now here's what we gotta do. And no, I did not figure this out on my own. I had help from Nintendo. Um, you put the blade on the Staff of Ages.
Next, you put the Silver Orb on the Staff of Ages. Light cascades through the room as the staff becomes a living entity. And I think you played the horn. No, you don't. Okay, that was just to open the door to get to this room. Anyway, now we use the staff itself on the Magnificent Beast. You pray as you raise the Staff of Ages that it has the power that the prophets claimed. The staff pulsates with power and a beam of light explodes from it striking the behemoth! Pwned! What the heck? The Warlock Lord has no face? Ah, look at that. You can see through the ground right there. The creature screams in agony, thrashing back and forth in great pain! In his rage, he grabs the Warlock Lord and descends into the depths forever. You can hear the Warlock Lord's screams fade into silence. Suddenly, it is very quiet. A beautiful light seems to fill the cavern. The morning sun, you say to yourself, it is over. It's over! Nothing is over! Sorry, you know how to do it. Although exhausted, you lean on the Staff of Ages and begin your long journey home. It's a long road! Okay, uh, word of your historic quest has already reached the farthest parts of the land. You are triumphantly greeted as you enter the gates of the royal city of Stormhaven. Moments later, you are ushered into the royal palace where you are greeted by the king! I know what thou hast done, brave one. The world would be dark forever without thee. Okay, for some reason I get stuck right here. I hit the button and it just pauses for a minute, I guess for to be dramatic here for the ending. Nice ending music. You are bestowed a kingdom to rule and the king's fair daughter's hand. I can't really see her. Looks like she has one big mouth. As you leave the throne room, you know that although this quest is over, others await. After all, the bards will need new legends to sing of and new tales to tell. What the heck is a bard? The first story's end. Now, I don't know what it means there when it says that. Does that mean it's a, a second quest in the game? Which I don't think there is. I never heard of one. But, anyway, that is the end of this game. And while I think the game could have had a better ending, the ending's not that bad. Especially when you first beat a game that's this hard. You're thankful to see an ending. Um, and yeah, this game is hard until you beat it then it's easy because it's all about memorization this game this LP was very fun to do and I would do it again but no wouldn't that be stupid do the same LP again anyway um, unless I do it on the S2K channel or something in the future um, but anyway I really look forward to having this game I mean having this game I'm, guys it's 4 in the morning here so give me a break um, I look forward to playing Take 2. I really enjoyed doing an LP of this game on YouTube. This game is awesome. I'm glad I still have a little case right here. I don't even know if this came. No, I don't think so because games that are third party games like this is uh, didn't have the Nintendo logo on it, I don't think. Only the Nintendo games that are made by Nintendo had it. But anyway, I'm glad I still have this game in mint condition. Um, it was very fun to do this LP on YouTube. Shadowgate is a very underrated classic, a very underrated RPG. Take a look at that game. Yeah, I just love the cover uh, cover art, cover box. The cover art right there, um, not much to it, but I mean, it's, you know, it's the perfect cover for this game. Very underrated classic game. I don't know how many times I've said that already, but I'll say it again. It's a very underrated classic game. I hope Happy Video Game Nerd does a review of this game one day. 
very awesome game. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out um, Retro Gamer 3's review. He does a good review of this game as well. Very good game. Um, so I loved doing this LP. I loved this game. I hated it at first, but as I got older as a kid, I it, the game grew on me. So I started to like it, and I played it, and I finally beat it, and I had a lot of help from Nintendo by writing letters to Nintendo all the time, and then calling the Gameplay Counseling Hotline, in which I got in trouble for it because I ran up a huge phone bill on uh, my grandparents' phone bill. They, um, my grandpa was ticked off, and um, but I love this game. I mean, going back and showing all those deaths in the game and how you die really brings back good memories. And I just remember that game was kind of eerie. You know, it was scary to me when I was a kid. And it was very fun, and I'm glad that I discovered it when I was a kid. I'm glad to have finally done an LP of this game on my channel. I wanted, uh, I wanted to do an LP of this game on my channel for a long, long time, and I finally got to do it. So I'm glad to have finally done it. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed. If not, then get off my channel. No, I'm just kidding. But um, there you go. I'm finally glad to have done the LP. And so that is it. Um, if you like point and click games or adventure games, um, I haven't played all of Deja Vu. I heard there's a sequel to Deja Vu. Um, I haven't played that one either. I have not played Uninvited. I heard those are great games. Um, if you haven't seen my Let's Check Out Deja Vu series yet, it's on my channel. Check it out. Um, but I don't know too much about those games, but they are real similar, and I think made by the same company uh, that made Shadowgate, Kimco, Seika, or whatever. It's funny, right here on the cover it says, Developed by ICOM Simulations, Inc., but it's made by Kimco, Seika. I think those are two different companies that merged together back then. Now it's just Kimco, I think, by myself. And um, I know I've said this a lot, and I'm going to say it again. Do not play Shadowgate 64. That game sucks. I don't care what anybody says. If you like it, I, hey, that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion of a game. I think it's the most boring game I've ever played. Uh, Pong is more interesting than Shadowgate 64, and I kid you not. I'm dead serious. In my opinion, I'd rather play Pong. I'd rather play Action 52. At least you can do something in those games. Um... Shadowgate for the NES is much better than Shadowgate 64. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. And in closing, I give Shadowgate for the NES like a 9 or 9.5 out of 10. Great adventure game. Check it out. I'm out of here because I need to get some sleep, but I do know what I'm talking about. Shadowgate, very underrated classic. I give it an ECW out of 10. I'm out of here, guys. Ron Moore, God bless. Take care.